Whales lived on land for millions and millions of years, became warm-blooded, nursed their young. Some of these animals then, about 55 million years ago, went back into the oceans, became the top predators. Orsinus orca means killer, killer. And their menu includes everything, from birds to turtles and on and on and on. Pretty much everything in the ocean has a predator avoidance response to killer whales. They're so much like us in the mammals, top predators, on and on, but so different in their environment, their mental abilities, and their social structure. At the Noyo Center, we really, really want to democratize science. So we started a partnership with Cal Academy of Sciences to respond to all stranded marine mammals. So two years ago, a killer whale washed up on shore at McCarricker Beach. This was a 26-foot killer whale, really big killer whale. So we did the necropsy and when we were collecting the bones, I knew I wanted to put the skeleton together. And we knew we wanted to not only learn about this killer whale, but as many other specimens as we could. We're still putting together who this whale was. And from the genetics that we've run, he points to a mammal eater from the North Gulf of Alaska. And being a mammal eater, they run like a trap line all the way up and down the coast. They travel in thousands of miles. So when this guy was swimming around out here, he managed to get his fluke wrapped up in a crab pot line. A pretty windy day, steep sea, and he was anchored or pulling around this crab pot. He had two pinnipeds in his belly, and he was in great body condition. He hadn't been swimming with the gear for very long, and because orcas are such sensitive animals, for him to have that gear around him may have caused him so much stress that that's probably why he died. We realized early on we wanted to create a representational collection of all the marine mammals on our coast. So we got in touch with Lee Post because he literally wrote the book on how to do this and has put together many other skeletons around the country and around the world. And then Mike DeRoos and Michi Main from Cetacea have really elevated this articulation science to an art form. And I knew I wanted them on the team to really help us craft a story about this whale from the skeleton itself. So when we got the killer whale, we created what we affectionately called the Maggot Motel. And that was basically a greenhouse with water so we could make it ideal conditions for maggots to they get in there and really clean out all of those small crevices. Then it went through a maceration process, which is where they just put it in big tanks of water and let the bacteria in the water clean the rest of the flesh, the oils and the ligaments and cartilage and all that stuff off of there and then it goes through some whitening to lighten it up and sterilize it a little bit. These projects are kind of like a giant natural jigsaw puzzle. One of the first things you do is lay all the bones out and try and identify them all, get them in order, get them on the right side. Then you can number things and label things and then finally go ahead and, and start figuring out how you're gonna put them together. Essentially, it's like building a house. All these teams, they each have their own little individual project. At some point, all those projects will start snapping together and forming the whale. A lot of it is drilling, boring, hiding metal rods. Mike's back there welding every day since we started, making hidden fittings that fit inside of these bones. Some exposed metal other metal hidden in, in places, but we wanted to make it so it would come apart and could go back together so it could be moved easily. So there were some challenges that way. The entire set of teeth were 3D scanned and printed on a 3D printer so that we'll be able to put false teeth on display with the skeleton and they'll look exactly like the real teeth. The real teeth are extremely valuable and without proper climate control, they can crack and become really fragile. We have taken the opportunity with our work to try and mount skeletons in a way that's really dynamic and lifelike, to more to portray not what they look like in death, but what they look like and what they did in life. There's so much to be learned from the moment the whale comes up on the beach and you start cutting into it and all the specimens to take that can let you know about contaminants, stress hormones, diet. So it may take years for the whole story to come together and present it in a way that we learn all we can from. Usually people's interaction with marine mammals is 
one that's from a distance where you often will see a blow way out in the ocean or the back of a, of a whale. As the skeletons start to come together, you start to actually see all the similarities between us as mammals and whales. And like you start putting flipper bones together and just hold your hand up and you can see like we have five digits just like a killer whale does. When you start to actually look at each individual bone, there's only one way it could go together and it's, it's perfectly formed. At one point, we had four projects going on at once. We had a bottlenose dolphin that Cal Academy brought here. We had an elephant seal and a harbor porpoise all going on on the sidelines. And this kind of project gave us this incredible opportunity with our student interns. Having them come and be part of this project gave them an educational opportunity that they probably will not get again in their lives. I'm passionate about the environment and animals and the oceans and I want to see people grow up and, and live to love those things. But before they can do that, they have to learn about them and be exposed to them. So the best part for me is just to watch a group of school kids come in, see how all those kids are being inspired by this incredible animal. That's really what it's all about. That's why I think this work is important. I think the community is really lucky to have the Science Center here and hopefully it will grow and be able to offer them even more. Noyo Center's mission is to advance ocean conservation through education, experience and exploration. And having a skeleton like this and an exhibit like this where we can do comparative anatomy and people see they have almost all the same bones we have. And I think that really creates a connection to these animals and through that connection, then true ocean conservation can happen.